Welcome back guys, it's the Tightwad and today we're working on a Kenmore washing machine. This is specifically a 70 series, but they all function pretty much the same way and have the same parts. It doesn't matter if you have more dials or a few less dials, but if you have the Kenmore or any one that looks similar to this, this will apply to you. If your washing machine fills up with water and the agitator will not move and it doesn't even sound like it's trying to move, you most likely have an issue with your lid switch. Your lid switch is right here and when the lid closes, this peg here pushes the switch down and lets the washing machine know that it's closed so that it'll agitate, meaning this thing will spin back and forth to move your clothes around and clean them. I've seen some videos claiming that you can replace the lid switch without removing the cabinet from the washing machine. And while it is possible, it's very hard to see what you're doing when you're trying to replace that lid switch. So you can use what you see in this video to attempt that method if you want to, because I'm going to show you where everything is actually located. I'm going to be taking the whole thing apart today, though. To complete this repair today, I'm going to take my washing machine outside so that you can see everything a little bit better. In order to do that, I need to remove the hot and cold hoses here. Before you disconnect your hoses from the washing machine, make sure you turn the hot and the cold valve off here or you're gonna make a huge mess with water spraying everywhere. And I need to unplug the washing machine from the wall. So I'm gonna get that done and get the washing machine outside so that you can see a little bit better. In order to complete this repair, we're gonna to have to remove the whole cabinet of the washing machine. And all these Kenmore Whirlpool and Ropers have slightly different configurations on the front. But on this particular Kenmore, there are parts that clip off from each side here. I already had them pop free so they were easy to remove. And then there's a screw on each side. Some of them don't have screws here and they have screws in the back instead, but you just have to figure out uh, what your particular model requires. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these screws. And once you get them loosened, you can grab firmly from the back and it should lift up and this whole thing can rest right here on the back just like this. The next step is to remove these clips. There's one on each side. I'm going to use two hands for this because I'm going to put my screwdriver down in here and lift forward while I'm lifting up on the hinge and it'll pop right out. Before I unclip the second side here, I'm going to unclip this connector. It should just lift up and pull off. That's the connector that goes to your lid switch. So this one is now free as well. It's okay if they come out, they just slide right back in. With both, both clips out, I can open the lid of the washing machine, stick my hands inside, and it simply lifts off. The lid switch on my washing machine broke several months ago. You can see that it's just dangling right here. And I'll provide a link in the description showing how to bypass the lid switch altogether. While I have the cabinet off today, I'm gonna to go ahead and remove this old lid switch and install this new one that I've already ordered. This is the clip that goes up through the top. This is the protective piece that holds all the wiring out of the way. This is the broken clip. And you can see that it is attached right here. If we come up to the top, you can see it's just held in by two Phillips head screws. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these first and we'll get started installing the new one. Under the bottom of your unit, there'll be a green wire running to a screw. This is the ground wire. So we're going to go ahead and remove this. On my particular unit, it is a 5 16 hex nut. Now I've got to get this pushed through. So I'm gonna use a flathead screwdriver on each side to push in the tabs and it should push right through and fall through the unit. And the last thing to remove it are these two clips. There's one here and one over here that I'm going to pull the wires out of. So I'm just gonna bend it back with my finger or with a flathead screwdriver and slide this piece out. Now I'm going to compare my original with the aftermarket one that I purchased. And you can see we have three wires with a green in the middle on both of them. The clips look the same, so that's good. And down here on the other end is simply a push switch. My old one's broken. Both say they're for half horsepower. So that's good. And it looks like the screw holes are in the same place. 
so it should go on pretty easily. One thing that is different is the length of the wiring. This one, the new one actually came with a really long piece of plastic here. So I pulled the wires out of it and cut it with a pair of kitchen scissors. And the wires are a little bit longer, but that shouldn't be a problem. I'll be able to hide them up in there somewhere, tie them up if I need to. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this new one installed. My plan is to do everything in reverse order. So first I'm gonna get the wires in place. And now I'm gonna put this clip up through the bottom. And it should just push up and lock into place. Now I'm going to attach my ground screw. And now I can position the clip and insert the screws and the holes do line up, so that's great. Get those screws nice and tight, and I'm gonna test the thing to hear it click. You can hear it click. That's a great sound to hear. And the cabinet is now ready to go back on the washing machine. I'm gonna show you how to get the cabinet back on your washing machine. And there's a lip in the front and lips on the side here. The bottom of the cabinet goes under the front of this front lip, and then the sides sit on top of the side lips. There's also a pin in the front and the back on each side. And that's what keeps the sides of your washing machine from flopping out. So I'm gonna slide the front end under the front lip first and then I'm gonna position the sides. So I came in with the front side low, and you can see that the lip of the cabinet is under the black bar of the frame. So it's gotta slide completely under it like that. Now I'm gonna hold my foot against the front so that it doesn't come loose while I guide the sides down on the clips on the bottom rail. So I'm gonna push in and go down, and you can see I can tug on that and it won't come out anymore. Then I'll do the same thing on the other side. Making sure that the clip is engaged. And you can actually see if you look in on the other side, the clip is engaged there and here as well. So now everything should line up correctly when I pull this forward. So with that in place, Pull everything back in here. This can rest on the back. Don't forget to plug your lid switch back in. These plastic pieces should go inside this side of the dryer on both sides. and they'll be held in tight once you get your lid clips on. With the plastic piece in place, line it up, slide your clip in, then press down to clip it into place. Do the same thing on the other side. Press the plastic backing in, put the clip in, make sure everything's lined up, and press it down. If you didn't already do so, again, make sure that you attach your lid switch here. Now this piece is ready to put back on. It just slides down with the back rim here over the back. There, on mine, there are clips on each side that are, have very obvious holes that they go in. So the screws go back in the holes on the side to hold this cap on. Now you're Trim molding goes on, it just has clips that snap into place. To test, to make sure we, what we did worked correctly today, I'm gonna to set it on spin and pull out the switch. You'll see nothing happens because our lid switch is not pushed in. So now I'm gonna close the lid 
and our unit starts spinning. I'm gonna open it up and we'll see it come to an abrupt stop. So everything is now working. If this video seemed to be a little bit more than you're willing to undertake, there is a way to bypass the lid switch without removing the whole cabinet from the washing machine. You can check the description or click the link popped up on the screen now and it will show you exactly how to do that with a piece of wire. If you found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I have lots of other appliance repairs as well as many repairs around the home and on lawn equipment. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section below and I'll respond as soon as possible. I hope you guys have a great day.